Um, hi everyone, I'm sorry it took like as a little bit of time to start up. I I had uh, some trouble here setting up this uh, uh, this talk. So I'm just going to go very rapidly to telling you a little bit. Uh, I I don't know who is uh, in the audience, but I assume that there are some people and explaining how is the um, scope of this finance domain for AI and examples. So I'm going to just go over the fact that AI in one way or another is a, a discipline of many components. So we do natural language processing, speech recognition, computer vision, all sorts of decision making, planning, learning, and all representation optimization. And eventually we create systems that can put these all together, uh, the, the, the perception, the cognition and the action and can affect the, the, the external world. So I will give examples of these types of like components or integrated, fully integrated systems. I also want to mention that within uh, JP Morgan, within the finance domain, uh, we divided our work, our research into very uh, specific aspirational goals, basically some related to the domain. How do we predict, uh, how can AI predict and affect economic systems, how to AI can help to liberate the data, how to eradicate financial crime, and then also how does it address our stakeholders, namely how AI can empower employees, perfect client experience, and eventually also help with um, uh, policy compliance and our regulators. And then overall, we want to create, establish, we want to establish ethical and socially good AI. So I'm just going to go through a series of like three applications very fast because uh, I understand we started late and I want to leave time for questions. Uh, basically, one of them is this concept of using images, like for example, in the traders floor, the images are overwhelming and everywhere. And so in looking at this time series as images enabled us to actually introduce a new concept of using neural nets or a machine learning system to handle time series as images of actually uh, snapshots of these uh, time series. And we were able to basically here, showing here, like uh, basically having a classification of images on buy, no buy to try to really uh, associate uh, an image with a decision instead of being an object, uh, cats and dogs, or apples and oranges, or chairs and, and uh, tables. It's about, in fact, uh, trying to uh, um, uh, learn how the image of the, final, the, final, the time series associates with the decision, so for image classification. We then did, and I'm going to focus basically on the prediction. So how do we use the time uh, an image of a time series to really predict what is the output of uh, the next steps, the next, uh, the next, uh, uh, the, what the image, the completion of an image uh, for some near future. And we have also done some work on trying to capture images uh, uh, organized in frames, so different images uh, capturing, co ca capturing correlations between data and basically uh, doing like a, a prediction based on video. And we also did some visual forecasting with attention, but I'm just going to focus on the Mondrian prediction aspect. And uh, basically here we are able to uh, train a neural net with uh, some input signal. And this autoencoder is able to uh, predict the future of this, the completion, the next steps of this uh, image. And here are comparison with like, different types of, of, of signals like um, uh, harmonics or eventually ECGs and the financial data, and which is the last one. And our method, this Mondrian P, does this visual autoencoder. And uh, basically, you can see that it can predict really well. This is the input, and the ground truth is here and it can predict really well. And in this one, you can see, uh, in fact, these particular kind of like uh, Mondrian P, this uh, visual autoencoder, to uh, predict um, the, the red part of, the red curve is the prediction, and uh, the black curve is the ground truth. Um, and uh, it was trained up to step, uh, time step 80, and then it predicted the last 20 steps of this image. And as you see, it, the predictions are quite aligned with the ground truth. 
from an image point of view. And this is very compelling because other methods, for example, other numerical methods, uh, are not really able to make such um, accurate predictions as the visual um, autoencoder that we used, which is literally using an image of this time series. And I'll be happy to answer questions on this. Then I'm going to switch to, so the first thing was then using these images for decision making. The next uh, topic I'm going to cover is only this issue about simulations. And these complex, these very complex uh, uh, economic systems, uh, uh, in fact, uh, um, encompass uh, many agents um, interacting with each other. And so we did these um, very interesting kind of like um, uh, agent-based interactive discrete event simulation, and it enables us to actually introduce into these uh, markets agents of different nature, and we can uh, simulate uh, and learn a lot of like uh, strategies to handle different types of agents. And in particular, you know the 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 what we have been working on these uh, these mar those multi-agent market simulation has been to really how do you say, explore all aspects of these uh, uh, different parameters, uh, different like uh, types of policies, different, uh, different types of like strategies. And so we can generate a lot of data that is realistic, but still simulated and synthetic. And that led into, uh, oh, sorry, that led into us be, having been able to use this simulated data as synthetic data, and I welcome everyone to come to our JP Morgan uh, AI research website, and we have, uh, I believe it's already live, these, uh, these pointer to uh, synthetic data that people can use, that is uh, financial data of these um, uh, simulated nature uh, in several different areas. So this is the second thing I wanted to tell you is about the simulation of financial data and through these agent-based uh, kind of like uh, uh, algorithm that can um, uh, run uh, lots of like interactions, lots of exchanges, lots of markets, and, uh, and uh, eventually um, uh, generate these, these data one way or another and also uh, be able to adjust and learn uh, to um, strategies that are best for specific markets. So I told you about the images, I told you about the simulation. The last thing I'll tell you about is something that's very dear to our, our heart, which is this concept of actually automatically generating reports uh, from data that was uh, that's of any nature. So we have, we have developed this uh, DocuBot, document bot, a bot that generates documents and can translate the representation of information, for example, as an Excel file or as a specific kind of like many uh, files with many features through commands that are language-based into, in fact, uh, automatically PowerPoint slides or any other type of representation. I have a video that I will share uh, that uh, shows these docubots basically uh, uh, being able to generate uh, these uh, these uh, system these um, uh, these PowerPoint slides. So though we have done also uh, Word documents, here it is. It says, "How can I help you today? Please run the execution analysis template for the last POV by order." for company ticker XYZ uh, today. And then uh, it basically just through that language, that was a, a, a language that can be parsed, so natural language parsing, and looking at the data, we are able to automatically generate these, uh, these, uh, uh, these, uh, this DocuBot generates these, um, these uh, PowerPoint slides and not only does it generate the PowerPoint slides, but then it can interact with the user about specific kind of corrections or improvements or change of data or appearance. So the, the, the operations you can correct the data include, of course, the content of the data, different types of like uh, companies or different periods of time, but also the aesthetics of the, of the slides. You can ask, uh, change the color of the figures, and uh, and uh, eventually center the figure titles. So you have those two type of like uh, primitives. You can interact with DocuBot 
and then eventually um, and eventually now uh, you can see that uh, the, sand, the 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 color was changed the the the, the figures titles were centered and literally uh, again this was executed automatically through uh, an interaction between uh, the the user and docubot and uh, finally it can also add a specific new data data um, analysis uh, tools or uh, needs like could you please add a heat map chart of the in-balance time series data at the end of the report. So look how much demands are here. It's like the heat map is the in-balance time series, and then at the end. So basically, all the data, all the slides remain, but there is this like top-level imbalance during execution, which was requested as a heat map, which is at the end of the presentation. So in summary, and I'll just pause for questions. Whoops, uh, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, in summary, uh, I very briefly, I mean, I was going to spend a little bit more time explaining uh, the different aspects, but I very briefly told you about AI as this discipline of components. And then I uh, mentioned to you how neural net based image classification can help decision making and uh, can also help the actual uh, um, prediction of, uh, so it helps with prediction, with classification. And you can also use these uh, complex multi-agent systems uh, to capture these agent-based simulations, having learning agents, and provide synthetic data of financial nature of these markets. And then we also cover these AI to support document generation. Now, in JP Morgan AI Research, of course, we, uh, we have many other projects, and I do invite you to go to our website where we, we can uh, do a lot of natural language for document and information discovery, learning customer satisfaction levels, uh, we can detect and prevent financial crimes, also applying AI for that, regulation and compliance, fairness in markets, ethics and values, and a lot of on client experience. So in summary, all our uh, research, our projects are organized along these seven aspirational goals. The reason why I think this is interesting to share in depth is because, or at least uh, explain this again, is because somehow at the beginning when we started thinking about what AI research was going to, to do in the financial domain, it was many, 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 many possible directions. And in fact, we started with lists of like, I don't know, over like uh, 50 use cases and then we kind of were able to understand that after all this is only about large economic systems a lot of data problems and eventually also the financial crime and then any company in particular financial companies too service companies have the stakeholders the your clients your employees and your regulators and overarching is that we want to understand ai from an ethical and socially good point of view so uh, we have publications on uh, lots of the projects we are doing and the research within the financial domain. Uh, you can see them at jpmorgan.com slash AI, or you can go to my website at Carnegie Mellon, which also has a pointer to all the publications at JP Morgan uh, with my team. So thank you very much. I'll take questions. And here is my email address in case you want to uh, contact me.